Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to start a three-part series on playing brushes in a jazz setting on the drum set. So today we're going to talk about playing ballads, and in many ways, this is your foundation for playing jazz brushes. This is normally the first thing I use to teach students. So let's go over the basics one more time. If you've watched my other brush videos, you have these already. If not, I suggest you watch those first. The left hand, in this case, is going to be playing traditional grip. You can play match grip, but this is one case where playing traditional really pays off because the hand moves that way. And if you play matched, it's a little more difficult. You have to use your wrist. So the fingers work better if you do this playing traditional. So when we do the accompaniment stroke with the left hand, you're moving in a circle like this. Now, depending on the tempo, that will affect how fast, obviously, and how big that circle is. So if it's a very slow tempo like this, you're going to use the whole drum. It's going to be very wide, almost the outer edges of the rim. When it's a faster walking ballad, you're going to do this. Now you're going to want to be able to pulse that stroke, and I do that with my fingers of the left hand. You can see that here. Now it's important that the brush be angled up like this on the head, not flat like that. There are strokes you can do like that, but for now, we're just going to use the tip of the brush so we get the nicest, most transparent kind of sound. So that's the first thing you want to practice, and just put on some music. Throughout this series, I'll be using two uh, separate recordings. One is Alan Cox's Meet the Bass Player. That's a really great series of uh, bass lines and guitar accompaniment where you can play drums uh, with. There's no drums on the recordings. And that is still in print, um, so you can get that from Alan. The other is uh, The Art of Playing the Brushes, which is a fantastic video and recording series that's out there. I think it was produced by Steve Smith, and I highly recommend that. And that's got some great recordings to play with, once again, without drums, but the video has all these great brush players playing so you can see all the different styles. And while we're talking about that, let me just explain that no two drummers play brushes exactly the same way. Everyone has their individual style. I have my own individual style, which I've learned from watching other players and also just practicing and working on my own stuff. So you don't have to play like anyone else, but I would definitely suggest learning from other players save you a lot of time if you can do that. Uh, but you will develop your own style and there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you sound good. That's the most important thing. So back to this. So when you're doing that swirl, we'll call it, that left hand, those fingers can flick the brush to create more of an accent. And again, you can do that with, with match grip. It's just a little more awkward. So this is one case where I believe the traditional grip has an advantage. Now, while you're doing that, the right hand can also do a swirl like that. So it's clockwise. Now, I play clockwise, but there are plenty of drummers that play counterclockwise. You know, they'll play backwards like that. Elvin Jones was one. I believe Peter Erskine's another. Uh, they'll play different ways, but you can see them. They play a little bit different, all right? So you can play clockwise or counterclockwise. Again, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. The most important thing is that the sound is smooth. So when we have both hands going together, it looks like this.
Now you'll see on my right hand, I'm holding kind of a French grip. And again, if you play match grip with your left hand, you can do that as well. So I'm doing that, all right? It's a little more difficult for me anyway than doing the traditional grip, but you just have to work on it. So. So you see there, that motion, that's called a figure eight. And that's a really good uh, stroke to start working on once you get your two hands moving. The other way you can do it is just up top. And just put your metronome on like quarter note equals 60 or 70 and play with that quarter note. Now you can play rhythms within that. So one thing I like to do is get that going and then I'll play different subdivisions. So you can do quarter notes, eighth notes, and triplets. I'll show you a little of that. So you'll see that right hand, when it does that, it's moving a little, not in one place. You can do that if you want. I just like the motion, I like the way it looks, and I like the way it feels. That will also help, that motion, with your timekeeping. Sometimes playing ballads really slow is one of the hardest things you'll have to do to keep that time. Of course, you and the bass player and the rest of the, of the musicians or a team and you all have to play the time together. But you have to have that subdivision in your head. So when I'm playing really slow, I'm subdividing either in triplets or eighth notes. So it'd be like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and triple, 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 triple. All right, you can even pulse that a little with your hand. So you see there, I'm not accenting all of the notes. I'm just pulsing slightly down here with my right hand. Now, as far as the hi-hat and the bass drum go, it's pretty simple. The hi-hat can be on two and four. You don't even have to play it at all if you don't want to. It can also add some splashes. I'll give you uh, an example of that. So. So you see there, I'm um, just some splashes, some close. Again, the hi-hat, a lot of times we'll be playing on two and four, but you don't have to do that. The bass drum should be extremely light. You could play in two, so one, two, one, two. So every other quarter note. You can play on all four as well. No matter what, though, it needs to be light so you're not getting in the way of the bass player. That's very important. Other little things you can do are trills. So. All right, so all those uh, kind of, we're not going to call them tricks right now. We're just techniques sound really great. Other things you can do on the toms are little scrapes, so. And on the cymbals, you can do rolls like this. And you can do scrapes with the back of the brush. It helps if the cymbal has ridges 
uh, if you do that. So something will come out. You can even play on the edge. I even have brushes with mallets on the ends of them. Um, Mike Balter used to make those, and those are really handy. They feel a little weird, but you can do cymbal rolls like that. Now, when you do cymbal rolls with uh, the regular rubber uh, brushes, you can do this. So that's kind of a soft part of the brush that works well for cymbal rolls. Okay? All right, let's play with some music now. So we'll start slow and we'll get a little quicker. You know, ballads aren't ever very fast, but I would definitely suggest, again, using ballads to work first on your brush technique. Uh, and by the way, I'm using a calf head on the snare drum. That's a really good thing to do. Never wears out. Feels good. It's always very smooth sounding. And these brushes I'm using today are just regular Regal Tip Classics. Nothing special there. So that was a tune called Body and Soul, and you see there I started very simply and just got a little more active as that head went on. It's an A-A-B-A -A -A form. So the bridge, I switch to the cymbal, and you can ride on a cymbal with a brush. It sounds really nice, especially one with rivets. I definitely recommend having a, a sizzle cymbal available when you're playing in a jazz setting. For, for ballads, it's tremendous. So you saw there I was just doing... What you want to do is create kind of a layer of sound that everything else sits on. Uh, it's just, it should be very warm and beautiful. You never want to get in the way. And again, you're subdividing. There's no click on this recording. So in my head, I'm thinking triplets. Boom, ba, 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 All right, and that helps a lot. And you have to be on the same page with the bass player uh, when you're playing ballads. It can move around a little, but it's important. Uh, there's so much space between the notes, it's easy to, to get in trouble there, so be real careful. Let's move on to a walking ballad. So when you play walking ballads, now you're actually uh, playing each stroke with your right hand like this. Now the next video we do in this series will be on walking bass lines, playing 
brushes again from slow to fast. So this is a good um, preliminary thing to work on where you're sweeping that right hand. Now again, everything is on the head. Nothing is off the head yet. We'll get to that in the second video when we start playing some faster tempos. So the, the uh, stroke I like to use for this is a figure eight. And something you can do is back up any strokes you play with your right hand lightly with your bass drum. It gives it a little more depth and it's again very quiet if you could hear that. Alright, so more of a triplet feel. Now again, the walking ballad is going to be a little faster. So let's try that. That'll be quarter note equals 75. So you see there, I got a little more active and even at one point towards the end, I went into a kind of double time thing, which is again common. They weren't doing it, but it's a recording, but that might be the kind of thing a soloist would do. And there you go from half time, which is this, to double time. That's a very common thing. If you listen to some old Miles Davis, especially with Philly Joe, he did that quite often. They'd be playing a slow tempo, but he'd be playing in double time, and the hi-hat would be in halftime. So I just, I really love that feel. So that's something to check out. Okay, so again, the next video will be on walking uh, bass lines, and this should be the one you watch first, and then work on that stroke. So thanks, and we'll see you soon.